here it is. I feel like I should play some white stripes on it. Would that be appropriate? Guys, I'm at Third Man Records in downtown Detroit. Uh, check out one of Jack White's guitars. On uh, today's episode of Guitar Archaeology, we're going to talk about Jack White. We'll talk about Third Man Records and we'll dig into the history of Supro. This is one of Jack White's guitars. It's a Supro Belmont. Supro was the budget line of National Dobro and later Valco. Here's a quick synopsis of the history. National was formed in 1927. Then one of the founding partners left in 1929 and started his own company, Dobro. Then in 1932, Dude came back to National, and in 1935, the two companies were merged to form National Dobro. They produced instruments, badge, Dobro, National, and Supro. So Supro was born in 1935 as the budget line of National Dobro. Due to a struggling economy, more business partners were added, and in 1940, the Val Company, or Valco, was formed. Interesting little bit. That name is the first initials of the three business partners, Victor Smith, Al Frost, and Louis Dapiera. Basically, National Dobro dissolved into Valco. In 1958, Valco started producing a line of guitars for Montgomery Ward department stores, badged Airline. These are the guitars made with fiberglass bodies that Jack White played in the White Stripes. <laughs> The White Stripes started out in Detroit in 1997. Each album they released is a little more successful than the last, but it was their 2003 album Elephant and his first song Seven Nation Army that really blew them up. Jack White was known for playing these old 60s Valco guitars. You used to be able to find them cheap in pawn shops, but that was no more once the White Stripes rose to fame. This man single-handedly caused these old fiberglass bodies guitars to skyrocket in value, collectors paying insane amounts of money for them. The Third Man record label was started in 2001. In 2009, the first brick and mortar store was opened in Nashville, Tennessee. Then in 2015, Jack started a partnership with another Detroit business and paid $5 million for the old Willis Overland factory in the Cass Corridor of Detroit. This huge old building now houses a retail record shop, a concert stage, and the Third Man vinyl pressing facility. Many of these old Supros were built with the fiberglass bodies just like the now famous Airlines, but they have a more conventional shape than the Map Series guitars. It still has a subtle Art Deco inspired vibe, but not as outlandish as the models Jack White is known for. Here at his shop in Detroit, an old Supro is set out on the floor for display and also to test out the third man pedals the shop sells. Now, I don't know if this guitar has been played on stage for a White Stripes or a Jack White concert, but the clerks at the record store said for sure this is Jack White's guitar. Let's take a closer look at it. We'll start with the serial number. It's etched into a metal plate on the back of the headstock. All Valco made guitars from 1940 to 1964 were labeled like this. Not just the Supro badge guitars, but also instruments that they made for other companies, like Silvertone for Sears and Airline for Montgomery Ward. Here's a list of serial number ranges and dates. Note that it only goes up to 1964. After that, from 64 to when Valco dissolved in 1968, the serial numbers were printed on a foil sticker or a gum label, and they used a different format. Jack Supro has a G suffix followed by five digits, G10665. 
That puts it in the next to the last range in our list and tells us that this Supro Belmont was made in 1963. Now we can do some digging and feel fortunate we're able to find online a 1963 Supro catalog and it does feature the model 1570 Belmont. It's advertised as a fiberglass body available with or without the exclusive two-way vibrato. It reads, this value guitar has exceptionally fine tone. Playing action of the 24 and 3 4 inch scale is excellent. The neat 13 and a half by 18 inch body is all new fiberglass in beautiful cherry red. This permanent polyester finish will not stain, fade, or check. Rosewood fingerboard, fully adjustable unit and bridge. Instrument has separate volume and tone controls, exclusive cord king neck. Back in 1963, you could have bought a Supro model 1570R for $99.50, or you could have ponied up an extra $25 to get the Vibrato. Model 1570V sold for $124.50. A plush shaped hard shell case was sold separately for $45. A rectangular hard shell case that was apparently lined in flannel was only $20. Or you could just buy the gig back for 10 bucks. Now let's put the catalog away and examine the actual guitar. Valco claimed the polyester vintage would not stain, fade, or check. And they were right, man. Look at this guitar. Going on 60 years old and still vibrant, smooth, and shiny. Here's that unique vibrato tailpiece. At first glance, it looks like it has an input jack on top, but that's just a nut. The input jack is here on the front of the body. It has top hat knobs for the volume and tone controls. Here's the bridge that's adjustable with a pair of thumb screws. It has just the one pickup, an early single coil pickup they call the Vista Tone. Here's the rosewood fretboard, and check out the wear patterns. Just imagine the stories this guitar could tell. Who knows how many hands it's been through before Jack White bought it. If any of you have owned one of these old Valco guitars, drop me a comment down below, tell me all about it. I'm not a good guitarist, but man, I love talking about guitars. If you're a Jack White fan, if you've been to this store in Detroit, or the one in Nashville, or the new one in London, drop me a comment, man, tell me about your experience. I want to say thank you guys, thank you so much for watching and digging these videos I put together. Also thank you to the staff at Third Man Records for tolerating me warbling and wailing all over your sales floor. And I want to say thank you to Jack White. I haven't met you in person, but the way you've handled your success is admirable. It seems you don't let fame get to your head too much, and all the cool stuff you've done with your success. You've reinvested your wealth and created this brand, started these stores that just seem so open and welcoming. It's more than I dig your music, you just seem like a cool dude. Thank you for letting me play your guitar. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.